First of all, there are some guides that are out there. Uh, one that's a classic is this one right here. It's the Real ACT Prep Guide. And this uh, guide has got five uh, tests that were previously released by the ACT. So these are what the tests are going to look pretty close to. So if you understand these tests really well, you're going to be in a better position to uh, do well on the mass section of the ACT. So this is one guide. That's the Real ACT Guide. Then for uh, this year, okay, the, you've got the 2016 and 2017 uh, official ACT prep guide, and this guy's got, uh, I believe, two or three tests in it. And again, these are also previously released uh, tests, actual tests that were administered by the ACT. So this is also a very good uh, guide to have. And then other guides that you can, you know, if you're looking for additional practice, there's uh, the Princeton Review puts out a guide, the Barron's, Kaplan, uh, all those. Uh, test companies put out guides. This particular one is uh, McGraw-Hill and it's got uh, 10 ACT um, practice tests. You can uh, get some more practice with this guide as well. And then I also have uh, a guide of my own. I put together a video course. I call it the Huge ACT Math Review and it goes through 65 important concepts that are covered on the test. And I'll have a link for that if you're interested in checking that out. But then let's talk about how to actually study for the test. So the main thing you want to understand when you're uh, getting ready for the math section of the ACT is that there's 60 questions and that you're given 60 minutes. So essentially what that works out to is a minute per question, right? But the thing is, is that at the very beginning of the test, there is going to be some very easy questions. And as you go through it, it gets progressively you know, more challenging. You're probably gonna to need to set aside more time to do those uh, more difficult problems near the end. Now, you don't necessarily have to assume that the problems that are at the end are gonna be harder than the ones at the beginning. Sometimes for some students, they're actually easier because those are problems that you've already done and worked on in your math class. So you're already familiar, it's fresh in your mind and that sort of thing. So don't get psyched out by those problems that come out late in the exam, thinking that they're gonna be impossible oftentimes they're, they're very easy for you. But the thing to realize is that when you're going through the, the test, those first few questions, what makes them easier is because they're like one-step problems. It just requires you maybe to you know, add some fractions or just do some simple order of operations. And then what happens is as you go through, uh, say from question one through 10 to maybe like uh, 20 to 30 or 30 to 40, then they start to get to be like two-step, three-step, uh, four-step type questions where you're gonna to have to do an operation and then use that answer and do another operation. It's just gonna be more multi-step and then there's more room for error because of those multiple steps. So that's just something to pay attention to. Now the other thing that you wanna do is you wanna allocate time to actually, you know, time yourself when you do these tests. In the very beginning, what you might wanna do is just take one of the uh, release practice tests, just go through it, you know, don't time yourself, just get used to the questions and just you know, go through it, see which ones you're getting wrong, and you know, that kind of thing, just to get a feel for the test, just to get a feel for the format of the test. Then what you can do after you do that maybe a couple of times is then you can start timing yourself. Say, you know, how's my timing? Am I, you know, am I getting done in 60 minutes? Do I have time to go back and look through some of the questions? Or am I, or am I running out of time and I'm leaving a lot of questions that are, are fairly easy that I should have been able to get you know, on the table, so to speak. So that's what you wanna do is first just take the test, then go back and practice the timing. And the thing that you want to realize with the timing is that the questions at the very beginning, those should only take you maybe 20 seconds. So that's going to leave an extra 40 seconds that you can use for problems, you know, in addition to that average one minute per question near the end of the test. So timing is an important thing. The other thing is a lot of students, they'll just take one practice test, they'll go into the exam and say, hey, you know, I'm ready. And you really don't want to do that. You want to take multiple tests. You want to see which problems that you're getting wrong. And the other thing too is that when you're doing the problems, you want to be able to identify to yourself, either say it out loud or make a note. Say, this problem is testing me on blank, whether it's proportions or it's testing me on functions or whether it's you know graphing or it's you know factoring, whatever the type of topic it is, if you can identify it in your mind or write it down and you're realizing those problems are the ones that are tripping you up each time, you're gonna to need to go back and go over those concepts some more to solidify your understanding of those concept areas. But what happens on the ACT is it's not that uh, it's that much more challenging than your math class. It's just that the questions are in a slightly different format. They're not gonna come out and say, you know, hey John, I just wanted to let you know, you know, this question is a midpoint question. 
they're not going to say that. They might make some kind of reference to halfway, or they might say something about you know, the middle, but they might not say use the midpoint formula to solve this problem. It's up to you, you know, to recognize that, yeah, this is a midpoint problem, and you're going to get that uh, understanding as you do more problems and you start to realize, oh yeah, this is a distance formula problem. Let me you know, get out my distance formula and go ahead and, and go to it. But the, what makes it difficult again is just trying to recognize, okay, let me take these, this word problem, okay, and then put it into you know, a format that I know how to just go ahead and evaluate, simplify, you know, do the process to get to the, to the answer. Now, there's a lot of test taking strategies and a lot of uh, videos I'm sure that you've been watching have been showing you all these little uh, tips and tricks and techniques and strategies for just guessing, right? And I'm not a super big proponent of that, although it does have its, its place, like when you're solving maybe systems of equations, it's easier just to take those answers, put them back into the equations, see which ones work. That's gonna be a faster strategy. So you can always do that back substitution technique where you, you take the, the A, B, C, D, E, and you just go ahead and plug them back in. But uh, I definitely recommend you know knowing how to solve the problems, having a good grasp of that, then you can go ahead and implement those little uh, shortcut strategies like, like plugging back in the answer. So other things that I wanna to talk to you about as far as preparing for the exam is that I know students are oftentimes busy, you know, I'm sure you're busy studying for your regular classes and the last thing you wanna do is, you know, study for the ACT, right? You just wanna get it done, get it over with. But if you're trying to get into a good school or maybe you're on the borderline uh, of getting into your desired school or, you know, your, your math section score is really pulling down your overall ACT score, what you wanna do is you wanna break it up into small sections. I mean, whether you're just doing maybe, let's say, 10 problems of one test every day, very manageable. You just set aside 10 minutes every day. You do those 10 problems. You know, you check them, and then okay, next day do 10 more problems. Sometimes it's overwhelming for students to say, "I don't, I don't have an hour to sit down and do this test, and then spend another hour going through it and, and reviewing it." It's just too much. So break it down into small pieces so that you it's manageable. I mean, if you have to get down to the point where you're doing one question a day. As long as you're doing it and you're sticking to a schedule, you know, in, in a month they're gonna cover, you know, 30 questions. Ideally it would be better if you could do 10 questions so that in a month's time you're going through 300 questions, which is equivalent of five tests, which is the equivalent of going through this entire uh, real ACT prep guide because there's five uh, tests in here. So again, we're just focusing on the math section. Uh, you probably have some tips and tricks and strategies yourself if you're watching this video. Go ahead and put those in the comments below to help other students that are watching this video to get some other ideas about what they can do to prepare. And again, if you're interested in purchasing the uh, huge ACT math review video course that I have available, check out the links for that. There's uh, three lessons that you can preview to see if it's right for you. You can get a sense of uh, you know what my, my teaching style is like and how the video course would be, but it's three and a half hours. It's not very expensive. Something that could benefit you if you're just looking to review a lot of those old math concepts that you may have forgotten. But again, uh, Put some uh, comments in the comments below if you have some other suggestions to other students. I'm sure they'll appreciate that as, as will I. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. Check out more videos regarding the ACT on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.